morning everyone today's video i am going to be melting metal in my backyard but it's going to be in the woods normally i do it in front of my garage because it's in the shade but guess what i am surrounded by trees doing it in the woods is going to keep my camera and the video in the shade which really helps out because when my camera is in the sun the heat from the sun overheats the camera and kills the footage. Check this area out. My backyard in the woods. And I got my nice fire pit right here too. So I'm gonna set up probably right around here and we're gonna melt some metal. All right, so in today's video, I'm going to be doing some lost foam casting using these patterns I made out of foam probably like two years ago. They've just been sitting in my collection of lost foam casting projects that I have yet to do. So I'm going to bury these in some fine dry sand, light up my furnace, and start melting metal. In today's video, I'm going to be using the Viver 12kg propane furnace. I still have some aluminum slag left over in the crucible that I'd like to remove. This is from my previous melt, the Ozog Mace. Now if you guys are interested in grabbing one of these furnaces, definitely head to the description and check out my affiliate link. I'll also include the video of my unboxing and preparation for using this furnace. I'm going to start this melt off by using some cutoffs. These cutoffs were from a Futhark art design that I did using a match plate. My first time using an actual match plate. So let's open a propane, set the gauge to between 5 and 10, and light this furnace. Now I'm not going to talk over the entire video because some people actually just like to watch metal melting. But because this is the lost foam casting process, I'll just explain briefly what I'm doing. I'm taking those pieces of foam that I carved out that I coated with drywall mud and burying them in dry sand. That's right, the sand has to be dry. If the sand is wet, it'll destroy the plaster coating that was applied to the foam. So continue filling this canister up all the way to the top and vibrate it as you're filling it. Once filled all the way to the top, now you can add your pouring cups to the top. This is where you're going to pour the molten aluminum into. These are just regular soup cans with the bottoms cut out. This one's a little bit shorter than the other one. Oh yeah, I changed my glove. The other one had a hole in it. Now that I'm done with the lost foam casting mold making, I'm going to check on the aluminum and see if it's mold. It's almost mold. So I'm going to grab some of my scrap metal that I still have left over from an old greenhouse and start adding that to the furnace. I have been melting this greenhouse down for like two months now. So if you haven't seen any of my previous videos, definitely check them out when you're finished watching this one. So the metal is finally molten and now it is time to start adding this scrap metal to the furnace. So I hope you guys enjoy the process of melting aluminum. I also added in some aluminum cans too. Those are really fun to watch because you never know what's gonna happen when you're melting cans.
guys I'm in the shade but it is still really hot out here I mean look I'm wearing leather it's hot it's hot and I still have a little bit more metal to throw in there before I do my cast so uh, let's start uh, let's continue melting metal This furnace is really cooking, and this puddle of molten aluminum inside this crucible is really making any metal that I stick in here now just melt instantly. Look how fast these pieces of aluminum just sink. enough aluminum for my cast. It's now time to preheat my crucible lifting tongs and pouring tongs. And then after they're heated, I'm then going to warm up the container that I'm going to be putting the slag into, because that's the next thing. Remove the slag out of the molten aluminum that floated to the top.
So I must say, I really enjoyed melting the aluminum in my backyard, in the woods. It was really cool. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. Should I continue doing it this way or should I do it on my blacktop driveway? All right, let's get to the pour. Have you noticed my new boot covers? That's right guys, always think safety. Get leather boot covers if you don't have them. So I have leftover aluminum in the crucible. So we're gonna pour it into an ingot. But first, let's warm up the ingot before pouring hot metal into it. So for some odd reason, I really thought I had quite a bit of aluminum left inside the crucible. So I decided to load up two more ingot molds, but you'll see I had like no aluminum left over. So it's been about 15 minutes and now it's time to remove these and quench them in some water. And now we're gonna do the same thing with the aluminum ingot, because who doesn't like the sound of sizzling hot aluminum in water? All right, the following day, I am in the garage. Now I have to cut off the sprue from each of these lost bone cuts. Yeah, I like to use the hacksaw. When the sprues are cut off, it's now time to hit it with a wire wheel and really clean it up to get a better look at it and see how well it really came out.
Yeah, I think they came out really good. So now I have to take it to my belt sander and chip away at the leftover part of the sprue. And when that's finished, I then take it over to my lathe for some sanding. For these metal casts, I'm not going crazy with the sanding. I'm just going to smooth it over a little bit. For this specific piece, I'm going to be using aluminum black to give it some contrast. I'll just apply it with a standard brush to really get all of the lower areas of the piece. I'll let it set for about 10 to 15 minutes and then take it back to the sander. I'll then sand away all the high spots and remove that aluminum black to really give it a good finish. So that concludes today's video guys. These are the pieces that I made today out of molten aluminum. Now they are solid aluminum ingots, custom made ingots. Again, I made these before in the past and these were just like spare foam patterns that I made that I just never got around to making. So I thought today was a good day to do it because I have a lot of scrap aluminum still and I don't want a ton of rectangular ingots laying around. I'd much rather have ingots like these.